Louisiana, on the road, takes a top 25 team to the woodshed. He goes up and gets the dunk. Good evening and welcome to the annual Welcome Back Convocation. Tonight we'll be recognizing the accomplishments of the Raging Cajun staff, coaches, and student athletes both on and off the field of play from this past year. Tonight also serves as a celebration for the upcoming season. My name is Jay Walker. I am the Director of Broadcasting for the Raging Cajuns. And let me tell you what that means. If you play football, men's basketball, baseball, and at sometimes women's basketball and softball, and your mama calls you and says, that man on the radio said such nice things about you, that's me. Now, if your mama calls and says, I was listening to the radio and that man, he said some bad things about you, that's the guy who sits next to me. Thanks for being with us tonight. Your hard work, support, and dedication to the Raging Cajuns Athletic Department does not go unnoticed, and it's our pleasure to have you all with us for this special evening. Please join me in welcoming to this event the President of the University of Louisiana, Dr. Joe Savoy. I'm proud to address you, our student athletes, coaches, and athletic staff, as you all continue to do such a tremendous job representing our university in the fields of competition, the classroom, and in the community. You know, the last 18 months have certainly been a challenge for all of us. As a university, we face lots of challenges and changes as we learned how to go about our daily lives. But what you specifically, our student athletes, have continued to do in the face of all this has been nothing short of exemplary. Your ability to adopt and persevere has propelled you to new heights and many historic moments and new records that were achieved academically and athletically. So congratulations. And as we welcome you back to begin another school year here at this virtual convocation and continue to deal with the pandemic, I ask that you set an example for your fellow students by getting vaccinated if you have not done so and continue to wear your mask. Now, just like in sports, beating COVID-19 requires us to follow the rules and exercise teamwork so that together we can be successful. Best wishes for our success on the field, court, diamond, and in the classroom. Go Cajuns. At this time, we'd like to congratulate our 2021-2022 Student Athlete Advisory Committee. The Student Athlete Advisory Committee is composed of representatives from each sport. The committee meets bi-weekly to focus on making the student athlete experience a positive one. And they also plan the community outreach efforts for the year. More importantly, the committee serves as a communication tool between the student athletes and the administration. The committee is led by student athletes who were nominated and elected by the representatives. We'd like to congratulate the newly elected officers for the 2021-22 school year. We thank you for your service and we're excited about the year ahead. The Sunbelt Conference Student Athlete Advisory Committee is committed to fostering a positive student athlete image 
both on campus and in the community, protect the welfare of all student athletes, and create an environment on campus to promote positive relationships between student athletes and faculty and administration. Campus SAAC representatives track the community service hours, funds raised, and any other projects. And at the end of the academic year, the institution with the highest cumulative monthly points is named the winner of the Community Service Initiative. During the 2020-21 academic year, the Raging Cajun student athletes compiled over 3,359 hours of community service. The average sport program participation rate was 98%, with 441 unique volunteers. 169 opportunities were attended, with over 39 organizations supported. With all of these accomplishments, the Louisiana Raging Cajuns are this year's winner of the 2020 2021 Sunbelt SAAC Community Service Award. In 2007, we implemented the Champs Cup Award to honor the team who earned the most points by participating in all Champs Life Skills events. In addition to attending these events, teams were also able to receive points for outside community service projects, academics, athletics, and for supporting their fellow student athletes by attending sporting events outside of their own sport. Now we understand that not all of our teams are the same size, so we calculate the percentage of each team in attendance to award total points. This past year, we rebranded the Go Cajuns program, which housed the efforts that contributed to winning the Champs Cup Award. Our Go Lead program has taken our student athlete development platform to a whole new level, focusing on the pillars of personal brand management, career development, financial literacy, and civic engagement. NIL education is now a prime component of this program as well. Student athletes, young people in general, they get too consumed with the sport and not consumed enough with what's going to happen when the sport is over. You know, we really had a vision of developing a program where their experience as a student athlete, as a member of our organization and team, uh, that they would be equipped and well prepared and in position to do well for themselves after football, right? Use this platform and this game to position yourself where you can take care of your family one day. You know, we're trying to create real world, real life experience. Uh, we're trying to position them and equip them with a skill set, a network of people, you know, and really take advantage and be aggressive in their time as a student while they're here. We're proud to honor the team that's displayed a total commitment to excellence in all areas of the Go Lead program. And the winner of the Champs Cup Award is the women's tennis team. This evening's next awards are not easily achieved. These student athletes have put in countless hours reading, preparing, and studying to excel in the classroom. They've each achieved the highest cumulative grade point average for the 2020-21 academic year on their respective teams. This year's individual highest GPA honors go to, in baseball, Connor Cook and Drake Osborne, 4.0. Men's basketball, Kentrell Garnett, 3.885. Women's basketball, Jamira Mathis, 4.0. Football, Brandon Bishop, 3.714. Golf, Bjorn Gudjensen, Clayton Kendrick, and Jack Tolson, 4.0. Soccer, Alyssa Abbott, Julianne W., Una Einerstadter, Michaela Price, Isabel Wheeler, Savannah Young, 4.0. Softball, Caitlin Alderink, 4.0. Men's tennis, Casper Dvorak, 4.0. Women's tennis, Clara Manto, 3.889. Men's Cross Country, Damian O'Boyle, 4.0. Men's Track and Field, Damian O'Boyle, 4.0. Women's Cross Country, Kelly Goff, Taryn Hill, Rosalie Michaud, 4.0. Women's Track and Field, Kelly Goff, Taryn Hill, Ashley McMillan, and Rosalie Michaud, 4.0. Volleyball, Claire Turner, 4.0. Cheer, Andy Bonhagen, 4.0. And Rage and Jazz, Celine Stegman, 4.0. Congratulations to all of our scholar athletes. We're very proud of your accomplishments. Our next honor is for the team that came together not only in competition, but academically, and together achieved the highest cumulative grade point average for the 2021 year with a 3.726. This year's winner of the highest cumulative GPA team award is the women's soccer team. 
Three years ago, the Sunbelt Conference created the Faculty Member of the Year Award to honor one faculty member at each Sunbelt University that has been a supporter of the athletic program and its student athletes. Each school selects its own Faculty Member of the Year, and then the Sunbelt selects the overall Sunbelt Faculty Member of the Year. The student athletes are asked to nominate professors that have made an impact on their academic and athletic careers. A committee comprised of athletic and academic faculty and staff and student athletes select the final winner from the list of nominees. The 2021 UL Lafayette Faculty Member of the Year is Dr. Ryan Seymour. Dr. Seymour is a senior instructor in the Ray P. Audemars College of Sciences and a member of the chemistry faculty. Dr. Seymour teaches organic, general, and introductory chemistry and has won numerous awards in the college. Dr. Simon's early career was as a high school teacher and the head coach of soccer and cross country for over five years before joining UL Lafayette. When Dr. Seymour moved into the collegiate area, he was pleased to discover he would once again be interacting with student athletes. He said teaching college student athletes has helped him in a variety of ways, including reminding him of how much can be accomplished when one is dedicated to a goal. He said, I have always enjoyed the challenge of working with students and student athletes are one of the best challenges that I've come across in my professional life. They each present unique situations that require understanding and patience, but I'm always rewarded by the dedication and the care that these student athletes exhibit. Join me in congratulating Dr. Ryan Seymour, our 2021 Faculty Member of the Year winner. The Dutch Reinhardt Award is given annually to a student athlete who has suffered a season-ending injury or illness and has come back and made a significant contribution to their team. We now present this year's Dutch Reinhardt Award. Julian Carl Dutch Reinhardt served as the head trainer for Southwestern Louisiana Institute from 1931 to 1967. At the outset of his 36-year tenure, Reinhardt's responsibilities included head trainer for all athletic teams, head basketball coach, freshman football coach, director of intramural sports, a teacher of health and physical education, and even a waiter foreman for the dining hall. It's estimated he took care of roughly 3,600 athletes and taught approximately 5,600 students. In 1982, head athletic trainer John Porsche decided to further recognize Reinhardt's devotion to the university by introducing the Dutch Reinhardt Memorial Award given annually to a student athlete who suffers a major injury and overcomes difficult odds to make a significant contribution on the field of play. This year's recipient of the Dutch Reinhardt Memorial Award is football's Ken Marks. At this time, we'd like to recognize the following head coaches who received honors for their respective sport this past year. Gary Broadhead, head women's basketball coach. Gary Broadhead selected as the 2020-21 Louisiana Sports Writers Association All-State Women's Basketball Coach of the Year. Coach Broadhead coached the Raging Cajuns to their first Sunbelt regular season conference championship behind a historic 15-game winning streak during the 2020-21 campaign. Additionally, the squad made its first ever appearance in the Women's National Invitation Tournament and played in the 2021 Sunbelt Conference Championship game, its first appearance in the league title game since 2016. Softball coach Jerry Glasgow was bestowed Sunbelt Conference Coach of the Year honors after guiding Louisiana to the regular season championship orchestrated by a strong second half run in which the squad won 25 of its final 29 games, including a key 8-1 mark against the league's top challengers, Texas State, Troy, and South Alabama. Head football coach Billy Napier garnered the Coach of the Year honors from the Louisiana Sports Writers Association, during the 2020 season, Coach Napier led Louisiana to a Sunbelt Conference co-championship, its third straight Sunbelt West Division title, and second straight bowl victory, a 31-24 win over UTSA in the Serve Pro First Responder Bowl. 
Our next award is the Assistant Coach of the Year Award. This year's award goes to an assistant coach in her fourth season with Raging Cajun Athletics. This coach embodies all facets of being a great coach. She works well with other staff members in the department, provides necessary support to her team, and is always smiling with a great attitude. She pushes her student athletes to be great on and off the court and was a key part of her team's championship run this past year. This coach is an important piece in the lives of the student athletes and her fellow coaches and we're lucky to call her coach. The winner of this year's Assistant Coach of the Year Award is women's basketball assistant coach Val Wiesar. Congratulations, coach. The Impact Award recognizes one support staff member who's gone above and beyond the call of duty. These individuals serve a vital role in a team's path to success, oftentimes being overlooked. This staff member is always available for her student athletes. Weekends, nights, goes above and beyond her job to help her student athletes perform at their best. Being responsible for approximately 90 student athletes alone, this staff member never complained and really connected with her student athletes. This staff member is critical to the health and safety of our student athletes and coaches, and we're lucky to have her on staff. This year's Impact Award goes to an athletic trainer who's in their first season with the Raging Cajuns. Join me in congratulating Shelby Peterson, our 2021 Impact Award winner. If records are made to be broken, then these student athletes have succeeded. Each student athlete who broke a Raging Cajun or Sunbelt record should be proud. We congratulate you on your accomplishment. In baseball, Carson Rockefort stole five bases in one game. Women's basketball won 15 games in a row. Women's soccer, the UL season record for goals against average, 1.08 for Lauren Starwood. In women's track, Kiana Foster set a record in the women's 60 meter dash, Reagan Lula in the women's pole vault, Claire Myers in the javelin, Maria Bienvenu in the javelin, Juliette Smith in the heptathlon, and Talas Spates in the 400 meters. In men's track, Chandler Mixon set a record in the decathlon, and Eves Cherubin in the 110-meter hurdles. In softball, a school record tying two triples by Sierra Bryan in Game 1 and Melissa Mayu in Game 2 at Lamar on April the 5th. In volleyball, Haley Wisnoski set a record for rally scoring era record in kills, career points, and single match kills. Team record for winning percentage, 17 and 7. Team record for block solos, 11. And digs, 109 at UT Arlington on November 6th. Congratulations to each of these student athletes and the teams on their record-breaking performances. The Sunbelt Conference Student Athlete of the Year Award was established to recognize one male and one female student athlete that has displayed the most outstanding athletic performance during the 2020-2021 sports seasons. Each institution is permitted to nominate one male and one female student athlete. Each athletic director is permitted one vote, but not for his or her own student athlete. UL Athletics is proud to announce the Sunbelt Conference Female Student Athlete of the Year is softball student athlete Sierra Bryan. Going up and making the catch. What a play. And we are joined now by the uh, award recipient for the uh, Female Student Athlete of the Year, softball player Sierra Bryan. Sierra, first of all, congratulations out of uh, some 200 plus uh, women student athletes. Uh, folks here thought you were about as good as it gets. Thank you. It, um, you, you told me before we started here, you're actually in Illinois right now and you're still playing a little softball. 
Yes, yeah, so I'm here. Uh, the season technically will our first games will be this coming weekend, and it will go on up until September 27th or 28th. So, how does it yeah. feel to be able to continue playing softball now that your college career is over? It feels really great, and I feel thankful and blessed that I have the opportunity to be out here with players that have been in the most recent Olympics. And like, I'm just learning from so many other great athletes and I'm just happy to be here. You um, came in as a graduate transfer from the University of Georgia. Tell us about the decision that you made to come to Lafayette for your final uh, season of softball. So the decision that I made, I'm really glad that I made the decision. You know, I spoke with Jerry sometime in October when I entered the portal and we actually go way back because he recruited me when I was like very young, like eighth grade going into ninth grade. Um, and so I already had a, established a relationship with him and, you know, he talked to me about the program and what he was trying to do. And I really believed in what he was uh, talking about. And I looked up into the program myself and I, I mean, I just thought it was a really great opportunity and a good fit for me. And I just wanted to come and help. And, you know, that's, you know, I just am glad that I didn't make that decision. I have to ask you this, as good as the Cajuns were offensively, at no time during the year last year, were, were you or any of your teammates named Sunbelt Conference Hitter of the Week? Yet, when it was time to announce a player of the year, they looked down and said, okay, well, she's only led the league in about seven different categories. Um, was it any kind of a surprise at all when it came out and they decided that you were the player of the year in the league? A little bit of a surprise. You know, like you mentioned, me nor any of my other teammates, like we didn't get the award of um, – Sunbelt Athlete of the Week. And I, I wanted an award, you know, so I tried my best to do what I could each week just to get something. But, um, you know, I guess things happen for a reason and there was a bigger picture at the end of the day. And I know that all that work that I did put in, in season or out of season, like, I think it all was worth it in the end. She is the University of Louisiana Female Student Athlete of the Year. She is Sierra Bryan. Sierra, thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations on the award and good luck as you continue your softball career. Thank you so much. There are several clutch plays for each team throughout the year. The Top Play of the Year Award tries to narrow that awesome list of plays down to just one. Let's take a look at the nominees. The winner of the Top Play of the Year Award is Women's Cross Country Track and Field, the women's 4 by 100 meter victory at the Texas Relays. At this time, we'd like to recognize the student athletes who earned All-American honors this past year. The right to call yourself an All-American does not come easily, and these student athletes have committed numerous hours to achieve this honor. They're considered the best players in their respective sport on the national level. Join me in congratulating our 2020-2021 Outstanding Performance winners. Chris Smith, football. Theo Wakuba, men's basketball. Cedric Russell, men's basketball. Maria Bienvenu, women's track. Yves Cherubin, men's track. Cole Coutois, men's track. Kiana Foster, Kennedy London, Serenity Rogers, and Taylor Spates, four by 100 meters, women's track. Sierra Bryan, softball.
The NCAA Woman of the Year program was established in 1991. It honors the academic achievements, athletics excellence, community service, and leadership of graduating female college athletes from all three divisions. To be eligible, a nominee must have completed and earned a varsity letter in an NCAA-sponsored sport and must have earned her undergraduate degree by the summer of 2021. Eligible female student-athletes are first nominated by their school, and then each conference office reviews the nomination from its member schools and submits its conference nominee to the NCAA. This year, the Sunbelt Conference selected track and field athlete Claire Myers as one of two representatives for the NCAA Woman of the Year. And we are joined now by the Sunbelt Conference representative for the NCAA Woman of the Year, Claire Myers Armstrong, uh, joins us first of all, over 2,000 female student athletes, and you're one of two that the Sunbelt Conference has chosen to recognize. How'd that make you feel when you found out? Really unreal. Like, it's such a crazy experience. And when you think about how many student athletes there are, and they narrowed it down to two women, I think it's it's very eye opening. Something I never thought would happen. You know, you're a, you're a local girl, and uh, your your dad was a very good baseball player uh, at UL. Your uncle was a very good place baseball player. Of course, dad's now a volunteer assistant coach with the softball team. Did it make it coming to UL and participating in track and field at UL? Did it make it a little bit more personal for you because you come from so close? Oh, 100%. I mean, my whole family decided to come to UL, like you said, baseball, basketball. I had another cousin that played basketball here. So when I did have offers elsewhere, it was kind of like, okay. But then once I got the offer to come to UL, I was like, this is a for sure thing. There's just a little bit more than um, UL spirit in it. There's also family spirit as well. You, uh, of course, had a great year, your senior season, uh, set a a personal and a school record uh, in the Javelin. You wound up uh, going to the uh, to the NCAAs and also uh, to the Olympic qualifying. But you had something else that was kind of getting in the way of all of that. And uh, and that was your wedding. And you had to kind of adjust on the fly as all of this was coming together. I did. I actually qualified for the Olympic trials at the Alabama Invitational. And that night my coach called me um, and he said, hey, when is your wedding date? And I said, June 25th. Why? He said, dang. And I was like, what? Why? And he was like, I'm pretty sure you just qualified for the Olympic trials. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay, like, let's do it. He was like, uh, it's June 25th in Oregon. And I was like, you're kidding. He was like, yeah. And, you know, he, he was very supportive. He's like, it's okay. Like, you only get married one time. It's not a huge deal. And, you know, I put the phone down. I looked at Caleb, which is my husband now. And I was like, I think I can go to the Olympic trials. And then, you know, I hung up the phone. I told my dad and Caleb was like, no, dude, you're doing both. You're going to both. We're moving this wedding. And my mother panicked because, you know, you and the mother planned the whole thing. We panicked, but we got it done. We bumped the wedding up and we did both. It was one of the best decisions I made. You, um, of course, are married to a former student athlete. Caleb was a, a pitcher uh, for the Raging Cajuns. And so it's... Um, it, Tell me how the two of you got together. I'm interested in that because I know your husband. I know your family. How did you guys meet? So I got asked by by my track coach, Coach Lawn, to join SAC, which is, as of course you know, Student Athletic Advisory Committee, my sophomore year. And Coach Robe asked Caleb to be a representative from baseball to join SAC his sophomore year and we're we're in the same, we came in at the same time in 2016. So I I remember going to my first SAG meeting when we had them on campus and um, he introduced himself to me. He asked me my name and I wasn't, I was just like, I'm Claire Myers. He said, I'm Caleb Armstrong. And that was that. And then a couple meetings later, um, he asked me more about myself and Thankfully, we were both on Student Athletic Advisory Committee. So those of y'all who are on Student Athletic Advisory Committee, hey, maybe it's, but, you know, um, we started hanging out because actually uh, we do adopt a family every year for Christmas. 
um, where we pick a family who's in need and we go shopping for them and we drop them off gifts. And that brought us really close together because we shop together. We learned more about each other. We got to spend a lot of time that week together, wrapping gifts and um, dropping them off at the family's door. And then actually after that night where we dropped off the family, he said, Hey, you want to go eat? And I was like, I got nothing else to do. Let's do it. And it started from there. <laughs> it just, it just went all uh, from there. You know, it, it, it is wonderful uh, that, uh, that the league uh, has chosen you as one of the two uh, representatives of the league for the uh, NCAA Woman of the Year. Uh, it's really one heck of an honor. But, um, you know, congratulations, not only on that, but for the career that you had at UL and on the wedding as well. It, uh, 2021 has turned out to be one heck of a year for you, hasn't it? Yes, sir. Definitely a year I'll never forget. But uh, I do want to let you know that that was my junior season. That was not my se- – I was only my third season at UL. So you're coming back? Yeah. That'll make, that'll make next year even even that much better. Congratulations yeah. once again. And we look forward to, uh, to more from you. And uh, give my best to Caleb. Will do. Thank you so much. Claire Myers Armstrong, uh, nominee for NCAA Woman of the Year. Our next award of the evening is a competitive individual award named after an inspiring and hardworking former football student athlete. The Charles Tillman Newcomer of the Year Award has been named in honor of Charles Peanut Tillman, an outstanding alumnus of this university and a great NFL football player who made great strides to become the 35th overall pick of the 2003 draft from the Chicago Bears, where he was a starter and recorded 83 tackles and four interceptions during his rookie season alone. This year's top nominees is voted by the Ragin Cajun staff and Student Athlete Advisory Committee for the Charles Tillman Newcomer of the Year are Drake Osborne, Baseball. Sierra Bryan, Softball. Maria Bienvenue, Women's Track. And the award goes to Drake Osborne, Baseball. And we visit now with the award recipient for Newcomer of the Year for the Ragin' Cajuns, baseball player Drake Osborne, who ironically was also named Newcomer of the Year in the Sun Belt Conference this season. Drake uh, was a 19th round draft pick of the New York Mets, and he is currently playing rookie ball over in Port St. Lucie, Florida. First of all, Drake, congratulations, not only on winning the Newcomer of the Year award for UL, but also in the Sun Belt Conference as well. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I, um, I, I just want to go back to your decision to come here because like a, a couple of other student athletes, you were a grad transfer. You had already uh, you know, gotten uh, your, over at Corpus Christi and decided to, to, to go ahead and, and come here. How much did your relationship or the fact that you knew Coach Deggs have to do with your decision to come to UL? Oh, uh, that definitely had a huge impact. You know, I spent my first four years at, at a and Corpus and I got my undergrad degree in sports management. And I decided once COVID happened, I decided that I wanted to, to move on and, and experience a different place, a different different baseball culture and, you know, just kind of start over again. And and my relationship with Coach Deggs playing against him in the Southland Conference for three years had a big part to do with that. Uh, he he ran a great program at Sam Houston. Uh, he's well respected around the college baseball uh, atmosphere and, and college baseball league, and so that played a huge impact with my decision to, come, to go to UL. You almost didn't make it here, though, because you had a little run in with a surfboard, and uh, you got uh, you, it, the surfboard won, and uh, and so you had to overcome that before you could even get on campus. Absolutely. That was a uh, life-changing experience for sure. It'll, it'll make you never take a day for granted and, uh, and just live each, each day one at a time. It seemed like in the second half of the year, you just exploded offensively after you got moved 
to the leadoff spot. Was was there anything about getting moved there that that helped, or or was it a coincidence that it happened at the same time? Um, I'd say it's a little bit of both. Um, hitting in the leadoff spot, I got a ton more of at bats than I would have hitting in the bottom half of the lineup. So I got to see more pitches, see guys a few more times, and and I think that had a little something to do with it. But I think it's also a little bit of a coincidence as well. I want to say congratulations. I know you got your first uh, extra base hit as a professional on uh, Tuesday night. Tell me how that felt. Felt extremely good. It's, uh, you know, I'm about five, six games in and, and rookie ball and to finally get an extra base hit was, was nice. I'm starting to, to get the swing of things and, and really get going. Just want to say congratulations again uh, on your Newcomer of the Year Award in the Sun Belt Conference, also your Newcomer of the Year Award for UL. We're going to be following your professional career. We wish you nothing but the best. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. This past year, there were many incredible sports events that resonated with the coaches, staff, student athletes, and fans. The Sports Event of the Year tried to narrow that awesome list of memorable moments down to just one. Nominations were compiled from each sport by the Athletics Communication Department. This year's top nominees, as voted on by the Raging Cajun staff and Student Athlete Advisory Committee for the Sports Event of the Year are... Football, Louisiana defeats number 23 Iowa State in Ames, the program's first ever road win against a top 25 opponent. Play action, looking deep for LeBlanc, he's got it! Touchdown, Louisiana! Garrett to the outside to the 40, Garrow all the way to the house, touchdown, Louisiana! Louisiana, on the road, takes a top 25 team to the woodshed. Women's basketball, clinching the Sun Belt Conference regular season championship in a win against Little Rock. Softball. Kendra Lamb and Summer Ellison combine to strike out 14 batters, and Carly Heath delivers the walk-off winner in an epic 11-inning win over George Washington in the NCAA Baton Rouge Regional. Takes one to deep left field, and that's your ball game. A walk-off hit by Carly Heath, and Louis Our 2020-2021 Sports Event of the Year winner, football. Their victory over number 23 Iowa State in Ames, the program's first road win over a top 25 opponent. It had never happened before, and there were some people who wondered if it would ever happen. But it happened today in Ames, Iowa. Louisiana, on the road, takes a top 25 team to the woodshed. Your final score, Cajuns 31 and Iowa State 14. And there is going to be a party on a plane coming home tonight. The Student Athlete of the Year Award was envisioned by the University Athletics Committee and was created to recognize one male and one female student athlete that embodied the highest qualities of being an all-around student athlete through their success in academics, athletics, leadership, and community involvement. The Student Athlete of the Year Award goes to the student athlete whose athletic excellence and leadership provides a platform to broaden the visibility of Raging Cajuns athletics. At this time, we'd like to recognize each female Student Athlete of the Year nominee. Women's Basketball, Ty Doucette. Women's Soccer, Julianne W. Softball, Kendra Lamb. Women's Cross Country and Track and Field, Taylor Spates.
Women's Tennis, Clara Monto. And Volleyball, Kara Barnes. And the award goes to Women's Soccer, Julianne W. And we have an opportunity to visit now with the Raging Cajuns Female Student Athlete of the Year, Julianne W. And, you know, you're, you're over there in Denton, Texas now. Uh, you're going to, to PT school uh, over there. But I got to ask you, you know, I know you were named the outstanding graduate in your particular college when you and and then this award has to do not only with athletics but also academics and community service. How in the world did you find time as a student athlete to carry the hours you were carrying, made make stupid good grades, serve as the president of the student athlete advisory committee, do community service? How did you manage to balance all of that? Well. When I got to school, I knew I had to make good grades because I had to get into PT school. So that was a no option. So I had no choice but to do that. So that kind of just had to happen. I think I manifested it really. Um, and, but like when it came to like community service and stuff like that, that was a lot of fun because we did it with our teammates. So that was, it was kind of like hanging out with them and we were just doing stuff that I particularly enjoyed, like going to like hang out with the little kids at um, the Boys and Girls Club and stuff like that. And then for um, SAC, I, I really liked that. I liked being a part of it. I liked being a part of, especially being like the liaison between like the administration and then the student athletes. I, I really enjoy just seeing kind of behind the scenes. So to me, none of it was really as much like work as it was just kind of a fun time. But it still was a lot of time between that and, and you know, and then t we, we didn't even talk about your time on the pitch now. We're just talking about all the extra stuff. Uh, you were the team uh, captain for a couple of years. What are you going to miss the most about about playing soccer? Um, I've actually been thinking about that a lot because I came here and I don't have any extracurricular activities because when I was in college, I immediately was given a group of friends outside of school. I wasn't, I wasn't a big on making friends within my classes because I knew I had so much to do outside of school that I could barely connect with the people that I already had relationships with and my teammates to add another study group to it. I knew wasn't going to even be possible. So that's been different. So now I have to go to school and I'm making all these friends with people that kind of aren't really similar to me in the most ways, but I also have a lot of free time, which is cool. I've never experienced that. Um, but I think what I really miss is probably just the constant like camaraderie and knowing that there's people counting on me and knowing that I can count on those people that are always with me all the time. I think that's something I truly do miss. And the, the instant connection that you have with those people is just something that can't be replaced really. I, I have to ask you this. You're at uh, Texas Women's University now. And mm -hmm. so there you are in Denton now. A lot of folks have been to Denton before because the University of North Texas is there. Outside of the Homa area where you grew up, there are a lot of people that don't know how to pronounce your name. Now, in Denton, Texas, I'm guessing that there's not a single soul that knows how to pronounce your name. How much fun are you having with that? Or is it just kind of a pain? Well, I'm actually in Dallas. So the Allied Health Campus is in the city of Dallas, which is even different because it's a lot of city folk and they never know how to say it. I get asked constantly. Sometimes I just kind of want to quit and just let them say it however they want. But it's something that's actually really like important to my family and the tradition of it because originally the heritage behind it has kind of just been manipulated in and it all started because in Natchitoches, they have country, like more country accents and pronounced words different. And so it's just kind of through traditions remained to be pronounced W. Um, but it is definitely something that allows people to remember. So I'm one of the ones that they remember my name, which is kind of fun. Um, it's definitely a great interview starter because people will immediately be like, 
how did, how did that happen? How did you get there? Um, so it's always fun. It's interesting. And until you get that one like fridge person who's like you, that you're not saying it right. Um, I'm like, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it, so far it's been fine. If you meet a Louisianian every once in a while, they kind of get it and they can guess it better. But all these Texans, yeah, they don't, they don't stand a chance. I will say with pronouncing it. Well, you know, you say that uh, you want to be uh, memorable. Well, you're pretty unforgettable here with all of the things that you did uh, in your career. Uh, you've got to do an awful lot besides be a great athlete in order to win this Female Student Athlete of the Year Award. We want to thank you for representing the university the way you did. Good luck in PT school, and thanks for visiting with us. Well, thank you all so much. Our next award is the Male Student Athlete of the Year. These student athletes personify the Ragin' Cajun's athletic mission by excelling academically and making meaningful contributions to the community. We'd like to recognize each of the nominees. Baseball, Drake Osborne. Men's basketball, Theo Akuba. Football, Levi Lewis. Men's golf, Charlie Flynn. Men's tennis, Casper Dvorak. Men's cross country and track and field, Ryland Thayard. And the award goes to men's tennis, Casper Dvorak. And we are joined now by the Raging Cajun Male Student Athlete of the Year, men's tennis player Casper Dvorak. First of all, congratulations to you. Um, this one kind of caught you by surprise a little bit, didn't it? It did. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you uh, for the for the award. I'm I'm uh, super excited to to get it. It's it's incredible. I, I'm still kind of a little bit <laughs> shaking. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. I just got to know a minute ago. So uh, yeah, I'm extremely excited to get it and. Uh, you know, um, I just hope it's a uh, it's a reflection of the work I've been putting in for the past three years for the for the Cajuns. Obviously, that is uh, that is something that has come home to roost uh, for you. Of course, you're a native of Poland, but you've been here now uh, for a few years, and I, I assume that by now you're pretty well acclimated to what it's like over here in America. Sure. Yes. Uh, I mean, there are some things that I you know, it's easy to get acclimated to like the language or, you know, just the reality of going to school and, and playing tennis. You know, I've been exposed to that before. Uh, however, you know, uh, the cuisine I love, but uh, the climate, <laughs> the humidity is still there. And I don't know if I will ever get used to the humidity. But besides that, I think you're right. Uh, I got acclimated pretty well. You, um, you of course, will be will be coming back for another season um, next spring, and you're going to be playing for a new coach. But actually, for you, that's not a new coach. It, this is a guy you know very well, very comfortable with. Yes, uh, Coach Luke. Uh, uh, he he was the coach that uh, convinced me and recruited me to come to to UL. Uh, I have a special relationship with him. You know, we've known each other for over four years now. Uh, he was one of the first coaches to contact me ever to come to play tennis for any college in the U.S. And, uh, you know, he flew to Poland to see me play, to see me practice. Then he came again to my hometown. You know, he had a dinner with my parents, uh, with myself, with my sister. You know, it's been incredible. And uh, this is one of the biggest reasons why I came here, just because of the, the approach and the, the care that the coaching staff of Louisiana showed me. What was your reaction when you found out he was going to be the head coach? I was extremely excited. You know, uh, of course, you know, that, that kind of thought came from my mind before that maybe he has a chance to be our next head coach. I really wanted that to happen. And uh, I, was, I was incredibly excited to, to get to know from Dr. Maggard that uh, he's going to be our head coach again. And I'm just uh, beyond excited to, to work for Coach Luke again. 
Male Student Athlete of the Year, men's tennis player, Casper Dvorak. Casper, congratulations to you. We can't wait to see you back on the court in the spring. Thank you so much. I really, I really appreciate the award. Thank you. Congratulations to everyone recognized this evening. Last year was a tremendous success, both in the classroom and the competitive fields and arenas. Amidst a pandemic, the Raging Cajuns won four Sun Belt Conference championships, had numerous student athletes get recognized at the conference and national levels, and finished first place in the Sun Belt, winning the Conference Community Service Award. As we embark on the upcoming year, I want to wish all of you great success, academically, athletically, and personally. We will continue to prioritize your health, safety, and well-being, while also supporting your total development through our Go Lead program, as well as through NIL education and participation. To say I'm excited for 2021 would be an understatement. I look forward to watching each of you excel and cannot thank you enough for how you represent the Ragin' Cajuns and the University of Louisiana in such a first-class manner. Go Cajuns! As we conclude tonight's festivities, we just want to thank all of you for watching and congratulations to all of the student and athletes who were recognized during tonight's program. Have a great year coming up and go Cajuns.